What if I told you that there's a city with no laws, no religion, and no racism? A town where everyone is treated equally, makes the same salary with a 0% crime rate. This place exists in southeastern India and it's called Oroville. Welcome to Oroville. I'm Gopi. I'm from Oroville. I grew up in Oroville, been here all my life. My name is Tokyo. And where are you from? Oroville? Yeah, I'm from Oroville, but originally from Denmark. I'm Rishi, my name is Rishi. Rishi, and were you born here? I was born in Oroville, yes. My father's from the United States and my mother's from France. My name is Roger. And where are you from? My native is Oroville. What does Oroville mean to you? Okay, in a nutshell, it's for people who want to create something different. I mean, you take a risk, you know, create something that hasn't been created before. It's a place where youth that never ages. It's a free, free world. It's a free space. It's a international community, which of course is spiritually based, but it also gives a lot of freedom. Oroville uh, is this place for design and sustainability and... Oroville was founded in 1968 by French native Marissa Alfasa, known locally as the Mother. She had this energy to bring and create this project. She was a spiritual guru and yogi who established Oroville as an experimental town where, quote, men and women of all countries can live in peace and harmony above all creeds, politics, and nationalities. It's like a permanent burning man or like an adult playground. These are all recycled CDs that are hanging from an umbrella. So the street sign is actually the Beatles crossing the road. So Oroville is about 20 square kilometers and it's integrated between five villages. So the 20 square kilometer includes five villages. Okay. So we work with the village because this was the backbone to also create the community around. No? Today, around 3,000 residents from 57 countries call Oroville home and it's one of the most interesting places I've ever been. Uh, one third is uh, Indians, French would be the second and Germans would be the third, Italians, Dutch and so on. Oroville is engulfed in beautiful forests and there's so much to do that you never have to leave. There's a football here we come and play in the night. We have a pizza night every Thursday. All the people who work here make pizza and 200 you pay. It's free, like unlimited pizza you get. There's a medical center, sports fields, and 10 schools. We have school that does not have a campus. They travel and they learn. And then there's another school with no curriculum because you decide what you want to study. There's a variety of trendy restaurants. Deanna ordered a smoothie and has a reusable straw. Cafes and handcraft shops. What's the name of this thing? Matri Mandir. It's a physical and spiritual center of Oroville. It's a place of meditation. No kinds of prayers, no worship, no incense, no candles. Silence is the only rule you follow. You sit in silence or stand in silence. Although technically owned by India, Oroville acts as an independent international community. It gets its budget from monthly contributions from its residents, and it gets funding from outsider organizations like UNESCO and the UN. And the UNESCO Youth Conference was set up in 1968. February 28th, where youth from 124 countries came with a handful of soil from their country and put it in the center of this urn there. It's an amphitheater and there's a white color urn. So all the soil has been put there as a symbol of unity, representing unity. Every single Oravillian, whether you're a doctor, a teacher, or a yoga trainer, makes the exact same salary of 12,000 rupees a month, which is only $170. Plus a lunch health insurance and free education for kids and free electricity. But the economy is nearly cashless. And any commercial activities happening generate an income and they pay 33% of their profit back to the community which is the foundation. I design furniture and make furniture as I love wood. I started this unit that do salvage from, from the forest. I do reforestation, trying to bring back the original forest we had here. I'm a graphic designer. I do graphic design and more technical drawings for furniture. Instead of paper currency, all residents are given an account number to pay for things. We just write the number and we can pay and buy stuff or eat food or grocery stores are there where we can use this number so we don't have to carry cash around. And because everyone here knows each other, it runs on the trust system. I can't help but wonder, what if the whole world was like this? Would the world be a better place? This is a question that I will ponder forever.